This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The Bentley's taking it out on me. I don't think I'm going to get it ready in time for Monaco. I don't know why you don't just buy a new one. I don't know why I don't just buy a new one. I don't know why I don't just buy a new one. I don't know why I don't just buy a new one. Four cylinders missing. So guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, well, even if you're not new here, you're probably wondering what the hell is going on. Well, if you're a subscriber, and if you're not, I suggest you do click that subscribe button. You would know that not long ago, we bought a Bentley for 10,000 pounds, W12 one, 2006, and we slowly started rebuilding it in anticipation to take it to Monaco, which is actually, tomorrow. It's taken blood, sweat, tears and a lot of money to try and get my Bentley from when it was crashed to how it is now. But then that doesn't explain why there's a brand new Bentley Continental GT on the driveway. <laughs> Let me explain. So Bentley actually got in contact with me. They watched the videos, they love them. Well, at least I think they love them. And they said to me, you know what? You're driving all the way to Monaco. The least we could do is bring up your W12 Bentley Continental in crew where they make them in the factory. And we'll do a full health check. We'll check over the whole car, make sure it's okay and safe for you to drive to Monaco. And in the meantime, you take home a brand new Bentley Continental GT and tell me what you think about it. So, it only seems right to get this car started and get up to Bentley. <laughs> There's no way a person like me should be driving one of these things. Let's go. Now I could literally go on all video talking about the whole specification of this car. But you could probably just Google that. So I'm just gonna tell you exactly what it drives like compared to my 10,000 pound Bentley, which is absolutely incredible. It's a different type of car. For one, the sound. It's a four litre V8 twin turbo, pretty much a similar engine to the RS6 that we had on the channel not long ago, if you've not seen the video, top right hand corner. And it pretty much drives power wise the same sort of way to the RS6, which is incredible in itself. Loads of torque, loads of power, loads of turbo noise. But the thing is with this, it's got 10 times more class, 10 times more comfort and just look at it. Hello? Hello. Yes, I hear you're on your way to Monaco. Yes, I am, yeah. Well, you better hurry up. I'm already on my private yacht 
and I need to tell everyone about today's sponsor of the video, Skillshare. Right, okay. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It has thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people including illustration, photography, videos, and more. So I'm taking a class right now with Penny Lane. She's a filmmaker and she's explaining how I can make my videos better with different editing styles and creating a better story for my YouTube videos. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So if you've got a creative mind, like myself, and just can't sit still for five minutes, I think you'll find Skill. Whoa! I think you'll find Skillshare is for you. The first 1,000 of you subscribers to click my link in the description box below will get a two-month free trial of premium membership to explore your creativity. Back to Matt. It's got 22-inch alloys. It's got a V8 which packs 542 bhp. It's got the Mulliner spec interior so you get the diamond stitching and everything like that. Don't get too comfortable though because that's a £13,515 extra. The paint colour is an alpine green. I think it looks sick. You see this display here? How it rotates? £4,770. But yeah, as you can see, these are the list of all the extras this car's got and it, it adds up. It adds up. I think... Uh, I'll stick to my £10,000 Bentley. Let's go. So, Hannah's on the channel. Again, everyone, Hannah's loving it. I'd say the biggest difference in the two cars is the handling. This one handles 10 times better. I'm not sure on the weight of it or anything like that, but it feels a lot lighter than mine. I mean, round the corners, it's a lot more nimble. It, you can actually steer it rather than sort of wrestle it round the corners. It doesn't roll as much. Enough of the talking. Let's go see how my car got on at Bentley in crew. Oh yeah, this could all be over. We're not okay. And we've arrived at Bentley in crew where they actually make them so we're gonna go inside the showroom now we're gonna have a little walk around there and we're gonna wait whilst my car is actually in the sort of technician area the workshop we're gonna find out well we're gonna see a massive bible of things that are wrong with my bentley continental gt but this has been an absolute treat like i i, I actually don't want to get back in mine after being in this but let's head inside and see what they've got to offer in there i am through trying to hold us together just want it to stop, want it to stop. Ah, uh -huh. smoke spirals off your cigarette. Ah, uh -huh. door slam to figure silhouettes. Is this over? Is this over? Is this over? Can this be over now? So before we see my car and uh, get it back from the technician. It's only right we see one which is in the condition it should be. <laughs> so here we have the Bentley Continental GT. Baby, I surrender. I can take it anymore. This is actually the first ever Continental GT that was made. If you look here on the bin underneath the screen, as they've just showed me. Two, zero, 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 <laughs> one. So it's the first one. It's only done, got 166 miles actually on the clock and it stays here in its home where it belongs and it looks absolutely unreal compared to mine <laughs> and it makes me feel sick looking at mine. <laughs> so my car is turned up now. <laughs> now for the 100, well more than 100 things that are wrong with it. <laughs> But you got you the guys that worked on it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have underneath it, but there is some sketchy bit. Right, stop the video right there. These two were the guys that worked on my cars and they're absolute legends. Shout out to you guys for checking over the car. And um, yeah, this is basically what they found. So pretty much the worst thing that I need to definitely get fixed is as you can see here, there's a, a cracked engine mount 
which has actually dropped the engine on one side by about an inch, which obviously was impossible for me to notice on my driveway, but these guys picked it up almost straight away with it being under the ramp there. Uh, they also found a few wayward pipes, like this power steering pipe at the front wasn't really connected to anything. Again, nothing a few zip ties can uh, fix. Now there's also an oil leak, which I did know about, and it is coming from the transmission. So they've advised me to get a new gasket on there and get the oil changed because that could, that could cause some pretty drastic problems. They obviously noticed that the tyre the was rubbing on the arch lining, but we've changed the tyres now, so that's fixed that problem. In the rear flexi hose, there's a small split in the rubber. It's not actually gone all the way through, but it looks like something that does need changing, especially because it's, it's a serviceable item. And then a few bits here and there, just like the rear bumper's not connecting properly to the under tray, but that's to be expected with aftermarket bumpers. All of this obviously needs fixing, but the main question is, are we going to send it to Monaco? Obviously, we're going to send it to Monaco. Worst thing that they've spotted is the engine mount. There's damage to the engine mount, so the engine has actually dropped a little bit on one side. They say a little bit, a fair bit which obviously affects the whole geometry of the car. They're oil filled as well. So that's gonna be something that needs replacing and it's definitely not the smallest of jobs in the world. And sorry to stop you there, Matt. One thing I will mention, which I forgot to mention whilst I was there, while speaking to the guys at Bentley, they actually watched my videos and then mentioned to me, you never give the main dealer a call when trying to find parts for your Bentley. Why was that? Simple answer was, I just assumed that it was going to be 10 times more expensive. Well, they actually proved me wrong. And here's why. So this wing, second hand, and it was blue, and it was actually aluminium as well, and the other side was plastic. It cost me £1,100 for a second hand wing. He called up the parts place, he then mentioned the wing, which would be the right one for my car, unpainted, with the little vent on the side, like the Super Sports one, would only cost 360 pounds. That's including VAT, and that's for one side. So I could have had two sides with the vent on the side for a lot cheaper, and it could have just been one phone call. Congratulations, you played yourself. So, lesson learned, and lesson learned the hard way. I could have saved myself a fair bit there, and well, at least we know now for later. Back to me. So, what a day it has been. And like, what an experience to go from doing things on my driveway to see how it's properly done inside Bentley. And this is all thanks to all of you guys and all the guys at Bentley as well. So if you're watching this and you've just tuned into the whole thing and you've not watched the Bentley build, go back and watch it. The link's in the top right hand corner now. Also, join us, click subscribe, follow us on the way to Monaco. Hopefully we'll make it there, even though there are problems with it. We've booked to go, so there's no turning around now. So. Hopefully we'll make it there. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Thanks for Bentley in crew. See you in the next video. Peace out.